the size of maybe two aircraft carriers. This immense, Teruchi sees this massive thing in the sky, and he's scared. Antarctica is frequently regarded as one of the most isolated and harsh environments on Earth. Yet for scientists conducting research on the continent, it represents a realm of astonishing marvels and revelations. However, during a recent expedition, an unsettling discovery sent shivers down their spines. The footage they captured has been described as absolutely terrifying, challenging our understanding of the world. Could this be evidence of a long-standing legend? Join us as we explore the chilling footage from Antarctica that has sent shockwaves across the globe. The Odd Alien Antarctic Robot In Antarctica's vast and frozen expanse, an astonishing sight jolted the entire world and left people on the edge of their seats. A colossal alien robot with its metallic frame gleaming under the polar sun emerged directly from the ice. The whole crew saw a whole bunch of silver darting objects. The entire universe held its breath and theories of extraterrestrial life started flying here and there. Scientists marveled at the intricate craftsmanship, pondering its origins and purpose. However, as investigations deepened, cracks in the facade appeared shockingly. After a series of investigations, the giant, scary robot that terrified everyone was exposed as an elaborate hoax created by a group of eccentric artists. The whole world gasped in disbelief, yet the fascination remained. Unsurprisingly, questions surfaced, demanding answers. Who were the masterminds behind the audacious ruse? How did they manage to deceive the entire world into believing it? What was their reason for orchestrating such an elaborate spectacle? As the truth unfolded, a tale of passion, ambition, and the insatiable thirst for captivating the human imagination emerged. The artists were driven by a desire to ignite wonder and provoke contemplation. They had ingeniously fabricated an awe-inspiring enigma. Although the whole thing was debunked, the Antarctic robot remains an enduring symbol of humanity's yearning for the extraordinary and the profound mysteries that lie beyond our understanding. The alien robot may have been a hoax, but wait till you see the absolutely shocking discovery made in Antarctica. It terrified people and got scientists scratching their heads in confusion. Is there proof of aliens on Antarctica? The announcement was made and it was simply mind-blowing, nothing short of jaw-dropping. People could not help but imagine these possibilities in our understanding of the universe. Many immediately believed that aliens were living on Earth. What was this announcement? Not only had archaeologists found the remains of historical inhabitants of Antarctica, which was awesome in its own right, but at the same time, the remains they found could be from aliens that once inhabited the area. Just moments after the story was released, the internet shook as the news reverberated and went viral online. The story claimed that a team of archaeologists discovered three ancient skulls. It was seen as mind-blowing, not only because it was thought at the time Antarctica was first reached by humans in 1820, hundreds of years after the suspected age of the skulls, but also because they were elongated and had giant craniums. The reaction to this revelation was to be expected. Alien enthusiasts and some other commentators immediately claimed they could have been the remains of aliens who visited Earth in the distant past. The reports claim that an archaeologist named Damien Waters and his crew uncovered the skulls in a region of Antarctica called La Paix. Upon this discovery, they were hailed as the first human remains uncovered from Antarctica. But after seeing their elongated nature, the description immediately changed to the first remains of aliens found on Earth. Mr. Waters, an archaeologist from the reputable Smithsonian Institute of New York, reportedly said, after the alleged discovery in 2014, that they just couldn't believe it. They didn't find human remains or elongated skulls in Antarctica. According to him, he had to pinch himself every time he woke up because he just couldn't believe it. Many conspiracy theorists arose instantly and pointed to the skull as alien visitations of Earth over the centuries. However, unsurprisingly, some people do not agree one bit with this theory. They explain that the skulls were a bizarre practice by some ancient civilizations to extend the length of the skull through manipulation from an early age. However, aside from the debates over whether the skulls were human or alien, 
There is now another major debate over whether the skulls were even found. Some people researched the origins of the story after becoming suspicious of Mr. Waters' alleged comments. He said he had to pinch himself because he was so excited when he woke up. Another thing that debunked the claim was that there seems to be no region in Antarctica called La Paix. Paille is French for straw. The people who did the research said they found no record of Damien Waters, who works for the Smithsonian, other than in stories about these alien skulls. Despite all these substantial arguments against aliens, enthusiasts are not deterred, so their curiosity was piqued again when a creature was discovered in the Antarctic Ocean. From the depths of the Antarctic Ocean emerged a momentous discovery, an immense creature with 20 arms remarkably similar to a strawberry. This enigmatic organism has captured the attention of scientists, and because of its appearance, it earned the informal name Strawberry Feather Star. The creature was found during a research expedition as the research team hauled their nets from the ice-cold waters of the Antarctic Ocean. They were awestruck at the distinct features of this strange creature. It is reported that these colossal entities can stretch anywhere from 65 to an unbelievable 65,000 feet. The researchers observed that these creatures possess an otherworldly appearance that distinguishes them from other invertebrate marine animals. And that's where speculation began, dubbing the creature an alien living in Antarctica. A study was published about it in 2014. While the study refrains from specifying the creature's exact composition, it gives it substantial proportions. The creature, also known as the Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star, inhabits the depths of the Southern Ocean, thriving at depths spanning from 215 to 3,140 feet. Archaeologists and adventurers discovered the supposed alien skulls, but even though this discovery is unbelievable, an adventurer named Richard Byrd has made more mind-blowing discoveries in Antarctica. Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd's fruitful polar exploration. Only a handful of adventurers have earned the much revered title of hero in the vast annals of history. Yet it's important to point out that not all of these explorers receive the recognition they deserve or have their remarkable discoveries duly acknowledged. Surprisingly, or maybe not, some of these fearless individuals had their findings deliberately concealed by those in power. Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd was one such explorer with an extraordinary tale to tell. Now, while the name Richard Evelyn Byrd doesn't immediately ring a bell, his recent revelations do, and they cast doubt on everything we thought we knew about our planet. Richard Byrd was a distinguished naval commander and experienced explorer from the United States. He was an exceptional aviator, adventurer, and trailblazing pioneer in polar exploration. Richard Byrd was also an ingenious organizer of polar logistics, and as a result, the United States rightly acknowledged his extraordinary achievements with the Medal of Honor, the highest accolade for bravery bestowed by the nation. His remarkable career in the Arctic region kicked off in 1924, when he was made the leader of a small naval aviation unit as part of Commander D.B. McMillan's Arctic expedition to Western Greenland. This marked the beginning of Byrd's awesome journey into the frigid realms of the North. However, his astonishing discovery challenged the foundations of our understanding of the planet. Unfortunately, it was met with great resistance and suppressed by the authorities of that time. We can only imagine the intrigue and mystery surrounding Byrd's concealed revelations. What could he have stumbled upon that was so profound and controversial? Did his findings contradict existing scientific knowledge or challenge established narratives? These questions hang tantalizingly in the air waiting to be unraveled. Byrd was fascinated with flying over icy landscapes, and this fascination began when he soared above the shimmering sea ice in majestic glaciers of Western Greenland. At this point, he first caught an intriguing rumor, entrance to the mysterious center of centers, concealed within the icy depths of the South Pole. Admiral Byrd, intrigued by this fantastical notion, has embarked on daring expeditions since then piloting his planes toward the uncharted lands of the South Pole. But fate had a different plan for him during one of his numerous flights over the pole. Something extraordinary happened. Let's look at his extraordinary flight, the strange one-of-a-kind flight. On May 9, 1926, Byrd and his skilled pilot, Floyd Bennett, claimed to have accomplished a remarkable feat, 
According to themselves, they were the first aviators to fly over the icy expanse of the North Pole successfully. It was a one-of-a-kind flight. This epic adventure began in Kings Bay, Pittsburgh in Norway, where they took off in their Fokker trimotor aircraft. Bird and Bennett navigated the frigid skies for five and a half hours, encountering only minor obstacles, such as an oil leak in the starboard engine. Despite these minor setbacks, they pressed on, driven by their determination in the thrill of exploration. News of their triumphant achievements spread like a California wildfire, and the entire nation of the United States erupted in jubilation. Bird and Bennett were hailed as national heroes. Their bravery and audacity captured the imagination of people far and wide. Their unwavering spirit and perseverance during their historic flight earned them the prestigious Congressional Medal of Honor, a real testament to their extraordinary feat. Notwithstanding, however, even in the face of overwhelming acclaim and praise, controversy hung in the air and doubts arose regarding whether Byrd and Bennett's aircraft had truly reached the elusive North Pole or they just made it up. Some skeptics questioned the accuracy of their navigation and the veracity of their claims. In his flights, Byrd witnessed many things and made many shocking discoveries in Antarctica, but one that left a lasting impression was the sleeping volcano, Mount Sidley, the slumbering volcano. Unlike early explorers who relied on traditional means such as ships to explore, Byrd used airplanes and other modern tools to navigate through the treacherous terrain. During one of his expeditions, he stumbled upon something truly awe-inspiring, a gigantic slumbering volcano that came to be known as Mount Sidley. This massive volcano is the largest in Antarctica and holds a special place among the famous seven summits of volcanic peaks worldwide. The volcano's remote location, far from human civilization, adds an extra layer of intrigue, attracting adventurous mountaineers who yearn for extraordinary experiences. He led multiple Antarctic expeditions, each one filled with remarkable achievements. Byrd's first voyage from 1928 to 1930 marked the beginning of his exploration. During this trip, he established a small base known as Little America on the frozen surface of the Ross Ice Shelf. From there, he and his team embarked on thrilling flights over the infinite expanse of Antarctica, charting new territories and discovering hidden mountain ranges. Byrd, not one to rest on his laurels, embarked on a second mission from 1933 to 1935. During this daring adventure, he constructed another base called Little America II, and unbelievably spent five long winter months alone at an advanced base located 123 miles away from the main camp. This solitude and isolation were a true test of his resilience and determination. His thirst for exploration led him on yet another voyage, a third one from 1939 to 1941 named Little America III. During this journey, he stumbled upon Western Island, a remarkable discovery that added to his list of significant findings. Bird's curiosity was insatiable, and his drive to unravel the secrets of the icy continent was unwavering. However, his fourth trip, Little America IV, also known as Operation High Jump, was his most ambitious and largest Antarctic expedition. This operation lasted from 1946 to 1947. It involved an astounding fleet of 13 ships and 4,000 personnel. This mammoth undertaking rightly earned its title as the most extensive Antarctic expedition to date, demonstrating Byrd's unparalleled commitment to unraveling the mysteries that shroud the icy continent. The Operation Deep Freeze, everything must come to an end. From 1955 to 1956, Byrd embarked on his final adventure to Antarctica, Little America V. It was an extraordinary expedition during the International Geophysical Year, and it was given the code Operation Deep Freeze. Byrd made remarkable discoveries throughout his missions and greatly expanded our knowledge of Antarctica. But here's where it gets truly interesting. Some of Byrd's most captivating findings were concealed and remained so for many years until his son stumbled upon his long-lost diary. The diary had somehow ended up in the possession of Tawani's Wakawa Shush. This remarkable discovery opened the path for forming the International Society for a Complete Earth, which is what we now know as the Hollow Earth Research Society. Bird's diary contained incredible revelations that challenged conventional knowledge, which scientists are proud of. Its contents remained unknown until the 1970s, when they were finally brought to light. 
To ensure that the diary's significance reached a wider audience, it was passed on to Dan Weiss, a renowned researcher and author specializing in UFOs. Upon its publication, the world was introduced to Admiral Byrd's hidden discoveries, providing a glimpse into a realm of possibilities. The revelations in the diary sparked widespread curiosity and ignited passionate debate. The extraordinary insights in the diary pages pushed the boundaries of scientific exploration and inspired further investigation into the mysteries of the hollow earth. The diary revealed many shocking things, including Byrd's rather mysterious journey. Let's take a look at this mystery diary, Byrd's long and hideous voyage. After being found, Admiral Richard E. Byrd's missing diary is like a hidden treasure filled with extraordinary tales. It reveals a captivating story about a mysterious voyage he embarked upon over the North Pole on February 9, 1947. At that time, Admiral Byrd was leading Task Force 68, stationed at the planet's southernmost point. They were part of an ambitious mission called Operation High Jump, a six-month adventure to explore the vast, icy landscapes of Antarctica. This expedition was far from ordinary. Task Force 68, led by Byrd, set sail from Norfolk, Virginia on December 2nd, 1946, and prepared for an epic journey filled with exploration and discovery. However, something completely unexpected happened during this grand expedition, something that no one could have predicted. After roughly two months of mapping and photographing the frozen continents, breathtaking coastlines, and hidden interiors, the mission ended for mysterious reasons. It is precisely at this very juncture that the missing bird's diary comes into play. Its existence raises numerous questions. How did the International Scientific Council come into possession of this enigmatic but eye-opening journal? Why would Admiral Byrd venture over the North Pole while leading a high-profile Antarctic expedition? One can only speculate about the motives and extraordinary circumstances that led Admiral Byrd to take flight across the icy expanse of the North Pole. Maybe there were unknown phenomena or uncharted territories that beckoned him, captivating his curiosity and driving him to explore beyond the boundaries of his assigned mission. In a journal titled Flight Log Base Camp Arctic, Byrd documented his extraordinary experiences during a mission to the Arctic as he ventured north. In his account, just a few hours into the journey, he stumbled upon a breathtaking range of mountains that he had never seen before. These towering peaks stood as a testament to the hidden wonders of the polar region. However, his expedition took a very unexpected turn when he encountered difficulties with the magnetic and gyro compasses on board his aircraft. To his surprise, these essential navigation tools began to spin and sway unpredictably. The researchers speculated that this erratic behavior might have been caused by the aircraft flying over the North Pole itself, as hinted by the reference to the base camp in the Arctic. Concerning aliens living in Antarctica, Chilean newspapers reported a new and strange event involving Byrd just two weeks after his Arctic journey. They claimed that he encountered a different enemy with amazing flying objects. These mysterious objects could travel long distances and move quickly between the poles in the Weddell Sea. A dangerous battle took place for about 20 minutes. An unidentified craft emerged from the water and attacked Byrd's group, resulting in many injuries and deaths. In one entry in Byrd's diary, he mentioned an unexpected mission over Antarctica, during which he was transported into the inner Earth through a vortex. There, he met humanoid beings, definitely not humans. They were called Egerthens, and they had a respected leader known as the Master. The Master reportedly scolded Brid for humanity's creation of the atomic bomb and warned him about its destructive power. This encounter left Bird amazed, and he believed that humanity needed to change to avoid a bleak future. These strange events were considered very unusual, and Bird decided not to discuss them after being briefed at the Pentagon. The last entry in the Lost But Found diary hinted at a promise to keep these astonishing occurrences in Antarctica a secret. Some newspaper accounts from March 5th of that year corroborated Byrd's claims as crew members of Task Force 68 shared their testimonies with reporters. These brave individuals recounted clashes with extraordinary disc-shaped vehicles, leading to numerous casualties among their ranks. Rather than dismissing or downplaying the significance of these losses, he informed the Chilean press about this formidable new adversary 
capable of traversing vast distances at incredible speeds spanning from pole to pole. During this mysterious voyage, Bird stumbled upon some disc-shaped aircraft that could have alien origins. The abnormal disc-shaped alien aircraft. It wasn't until three weeks after the reported encounter that Operation High Jump, an important mission, was unexpectedly canceled. Task Force 68, comprising a group of military personnel, was stationed in Chilean ports. One of the crew members informed the media about the strange battle against disc-shaped objects that emerged from the sea after their Pentagon debriefing. However, all communication from the leader, Bird, was silenced after that point, and no further updates were shared. During the same year, in July, there were numerous reports of UFO sightings in residential areas across the United States. During this time, a disc-shaped object was rumored to have been recovered from a ranch near Roswell, New Mexico. Some have speculated that the adventure known as Operation High Jump was a response to a supposed Nazi colony called New Schwabenland, believed to have been established by Adolf Hitler in Antarctica during World War II. Also, there were theories that Hitler himself may have escaped in the book Our Earth is Hollow by Rodney Cloth, an author fascinated by the idea of a hollow earth. It is claimed that a renowned explorer named Byrd had an extraordinary journey in 1927. According to Cloth, Byrd allegedly discovered entrances to the hollow earth at both the North and South Poles. Byrd made significant discoveries, but the questions still hang in the air. Why was he silenced and prevented from openly discussing his remarkable experience? If knowledge of this encounter had not been suppressed, how might it have shaped humanity's understanding of the world? Could the wave of UFO sightings during that period be connected to this specific encounter? While the truth of Bird's adventures remains uncertain, there have been numerous reports of UFO sightings in Antarctica. Prominent UFO hunters have documented these sightings suggesting a mysterious presence on the icy continent. The alien aircraft aren't the only things found in Antarctica. Aside from Bird's discoveries, something else was seen, which has left us questioning our understanding of the universe. The pyramids in the frozen lands of Antarctica. The discovery of pyramids in Antarctica almost broke the internet. It shook online spaces worldwide, and people could not just understand how. Pyramids are known to exist in countries like Egypt and Peru. So why exactly are there pyramids in Antarctica? Amid the frozen landscapes of the ice-covered continent of Antarctica, a mysterious structure stands imposingly, its tip piercing the ice and staring proudly at the world. All the way around the world, we find evidence of pyramid structures. It is an artificial structure, probably be the oldest pyramid this figure, a supposed pyramid, is visible under the dense layers of frost in the Ellsworth mountain range. Unsurprisingly, it has generated a host of conspiracy theories, capturing the imagination of many people. But as any seasoned traveler knows, not all things are as they seem. You don't even have to be a seasoned traveler to know that ancient pyramids, as grand and majestic as they are, are always cloaked in mystery and are primarily associated with places like Egypt, Sudan, Mexico, Italy, Iraq, and Peru. Pyramids with their intricate designs and construction methods bear testament to past civilizations in these lands. As a result, discovering such a structure in Antarctica is just as thrilling as it is disturbing and confusing. However, we must differentiate fact from fiction. Recent Google Earth images that have intensified speculation show an aerial view of the intriguing formation. At first glance, the supposed pyramid looks like a sharp mountain. Its top shoots out from the tundra. Now this is where the interesting things begin. Speculation has long started circulating about whether it is a creation of an ancient civilization, long lost to time, or more interestingly, whether it is extraterrestrial craftsmanship. The detectives of Earth's mysteries, known as geologists, have long begun their research to ascertain this wonder's true nature. As countless speculations flew back and forth on social media, with images and theories making their rounds, these experts began weighing in on the matter. According to a Californian university professor, Eric Rigna, an expert in Earth system science, the whole thing may just be a needless fuss about nothing. 
He says the structure is just a mountain resembling a pyramid. He further elaborated that pyramid shapes are not entirely impossible. Many peaks partially look like pyramids, but they only have one or two faces like that, contrary to a pyramid with four. According to the results of geological consensus, the structure's steep, pyramid-like sides result from hundreds of millions of years of erosion. Dr. Mitch Darcy, an eminent geologist at the German Research Center for Geosciences, provided further clarity, stating when she stated that the pyramid-shaped structures are located in the Ellsworth Mountains, which is a range of more than 400 Kalmata long. So it's no surprise rocky peaks are cropping out above the ice. To Darcy, the rock formation's semblance to a pyramid is just a coincidence. Darcy sheds more light on the pyramid's actual nature by explaining that it is a noon attack by definition. A noon attack is simply a peak of rock that sticks out above a glacier or a sheet of ice. This structure has the shape of a pyramid, but that doesn't make it a human construction. It's a complete natural formation. The nameless mountain is located in an area known as the Heritage Range, which is no stranger to historical wonders. Remarkable fossils have been discovered, some dating back more than 500 million years. Standing at 4,050 feet, this structure might not be imposing compared to other mountains, but its complicated nature leaves people in perpetual imagination. The human mind is naturally curious, continually seeking patterns and explanations for anything tagged as unknown. While the Antarctic Pyramid has stirred excitement and speculation, which might not be at the point, it is a testament to our planet's natural wonders and the intricate processes that define their nature. As the world continues to debate its origins, the icy pyramid-like mountain remains a testament to the ever-evolving landscape of the Earth, an emblem of natural beauty and mystery in the heart of ice-covered Antarctica. But the question remains, how did these pyramids come about? Did a now extinct civilization develop them? What do you think about these terrifying discoveries? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to see more videos.